Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Fernandez Lopez and I'm a senior software engineer at SUSE. And today I'm here to talk to you about KubeWarden, which is a project that leverages WebAssembly to write Kubernetes admission policies. So what is KubeWarden? KubeWarden is a Kubernetes policy engine. It allows you to enforce security and compliance within your cluster. And how do we do that? We do that by using uh, WebAssembly binaries as policies. And so what these policies are going to do is they are going to receive a JSON object, which resembles a request. We'll uh, get some settings, optional settings uh, for their execution. And based on that, they are going to take a decision on whether they should accept uh, the request, accept but mutating it, or reject the request altogether. So if we think in isolation about this, then we are processing one request and we can either do the acceptance, rejection, or mutation of that request. But how does KubeWarden intercept requests and provide responses with a decision? Because this is targeting Kubernetes. How does, how does this work? How does this integrate with Kubernetes? And for that, Kubernetes has an answer, and this is called dynamic admission controllers. And by that, we are able to register webhooks inside the Kubernetes API server. There are different ways mutating and validating. And we can say on each of these webhook configurations in which kind of resources and API versions groups we are interested. And so when we register these webhooks, the Kubernetes API server, when it gets a request from a client, in this case, we have the kubectl uh, CLI tool being called, but it could be any kind of any kind of uh, HTTP request done to the API server. It will go ahead and we look for all the webhooks that are registered against this resource and operation. And so it will go through all the webhooks that are registered and it will produce an admission review for each one of them. And then every webhook will have to answer uh, to the Kubernetes API server, give an answer to it, and then the Kubernetes API server will collect all these responses from all webhooks, and it will produce the final response to the client. And uh, we know how to connect this with, with Kubernetes. We saw that we are going to use WebAssembly, and the question is, why do we want to use WebAssembly. So there are many reasons for that. And the first one is that it is sandboxed. So because KubeWarden is a security focused project, we are very interested in that the interactions that happen between the guest, uh, this is in this case, the policy and the host, that is the runtime running the policy are controlled and are only the ones that we want. And so the sandbox uh, model of WebAssembly fits perfectly into this. But it's not only that, it's also portable. And so when we, we are able to build a, a, um, a policy and we can build that in any kind of machine, any kind of architecture, we don't need to cross compile. We also don't need to have uh, multi art images, like for example, with the container images. So it's portable and we can just copy and paste this uh, policy in any kind of machine and operating system and it will work. As long as we have, if, if this policy needs some WASI interfaces or, so, um, or some WASI capability, capabilities, then of course this is required, but the, the binary itself is portable. So this is super important for us. And also it's a standalone, which means that uh, I have this, this binary and I don't need any kind of uh, backing or, or supporting library uh, that I am dynamically linked link to or the libc, for example, I don't need any of that. They are standalone binaries. Also WebAssembly is extendable. So it, it allows us uh, by custom by using custom sections in the binary itself to allow for rich embeddings. We will look more into that uh, later. But the idea is that we we can ex we can add more information, arbitrary information to the binary, and this information will go with the binary wherever it goes. And so this is very interesting um, to keep important information with the policy that always flies with the policy. So if we look at all these features, uh, we kind of see that we are kind of describing like a universal binary. 
right? Uh, so we have uh, the way in which we we are going to um, evaluate requests. We know what, what we are going to use to evaluate requests. That are, is WebAssembly, but now we are going to look into why do another policy framework? What is the state of the art right now regarding policy frameworks? So right now, and there is no right or wrong here. There are different ways to in, in to take decisions, and every company might take different decisions based on this. But this is important to take into account. So right now, the policy frameworks that are uh, widely used uh, are based on domain-specific languages, and so they they you have to learn uh, about these domain-specific languages. You need to learn about how to use them. You need to learn about how um, what, what they allow to you to, what they allow you to do and what uh, they don't allow you to do, and so this uh, this has a cost. Like you need uh, you need to understand all this and then work on the, um, uh, and write uh, code for this for these specific languages, and also. Uh, we have uh, policy maintenance and distribution is not straightforward yet. So uh, we are right now. You are deploying different uh, deploy. We are create. You are creating different deployments, different uh, workloads running on different clusters. But policies is also something that you need to to uh, to cover somehow. You need to solve it in any way, in some way that you are already doing uh, for other things. So this is also not a super straightforward solution uh, in the in this sense. So what happens if, for example, we were thinking about uh, what if we create a policy framework that based on a universal binary, we could have kind of a universal policy framework based on that. And so this is what we are trying to aim for with your warden. Because uh, if you look at the left from the top to the bottom, we have open policy agent, which is uh, which is um, a, a, a policy engine as well. And you this you have to write uh, policies in Rigo in the Rigo language. And you can also try to use Gatekeeper, which also you need to you to to write them. Uh, you need to write uh, policies with Rigo. And also, for example, uh, you could have uh, you could use uh, Keyword and SDK for writing policies in different languages that we support, like Rust, Go, Swift, and will more more languages will come over time. But the important bit here is that we are able to build uh, these programs or these policies to the very same thing that is a WebAssembly binary. And so I am able to to build this. I have a local binary inside my machine, in my, inside my desktop or my laptop or whatever. And then the next problem is how I publish this because I need to publish it somewhere, right? And so there is a step before that. That is that we have to annotate the policy. Annotating the policy takes advantage of what we said before the custom sections. So we need uh, we need to annotate with what resources this policy understands. Uh, a policy might be target, targeting some um, some API group of a specific API version, some specific kind of resource or a list of them. It really depends. But it needs to to document what kind of resources it understands. And since, since this information flies with the policy, the policy will always say what it is able to understand and what it is able to take decisions upon. And also, uh, we can by annotating. You can also add free from documentation to the policy. You can add also authors, for example, or the license or some other information. So now we have this file uh, that we annotated, and we have this policy that is also a file that is annotated. And now the next step would be to publish it. And the Keywarden supports OCI registries. And you are the good news is that you are are already using them because you are uh, deploying containers inside, inside Kubernetes and you are pulling these container images from an OCI registry. And if you have an, an OCI registry or several of them, uh, you will be able to publish these policies uh, to the OCI registry. And this is this works just out of the box. Uh, you just uh, is just uh, an OCI artifact inside of the OCI registry, and it, they are next. These policies are next to your container images, so you don't need to do anything special about uh, about that. You don't need to do anything special to support policies inside your OCI registries. Okay, so we see now that the storage is clear, but uh, what about the execution? <clears throat> so. We have the policy server that is the component that is going to actually run our policies inside of policy evaluators or um, runtimes, WASM runtimes. And so the policy server, when it starts, it reads its configuration and see what are the policies that it should be running. 
And so let's assume that this policy server on, this, on its configuration has three policies. For example, the first one is written uh, for open policy agent. The second one is for gatekeeper. Both are, are written in Rigo. And the third one is written in Rust, for example, with, Q, the, with the cube word and SDK. But we don't care about that because this is, these are all binaries for us. And so the policy server reads this information, this configuration file, pulls all these policies, and it starts an evaluator for each one of them and creates an endpoint for each one of them. So the policy server has an HTTP server listening with three endpoints in this case, and then every endpoint is going to forward the whatever it, it reads to the policy that is running. And so uh, then what happens is uh, that uh, the, the cube warden controller will register the webhook with the right endpoints inside of the policy server. And so you will have, you will start seeing that the Kubernetes API server is uh, forwarding requests or initial reviews to our policy server. And then the policy server, depending on the endpoint that was uh, approached by the Kubernetes API server, is going to forward that to the right policy. And then the right policy will do the evaluation instead of the WASM uh, runtime. So we have this way of, of working. We see how to deploy that. And now the question is, um, can we do a little better regarding the cloud native intersection? And the answer is yes. Uh, right now we have tracing support uh, inside of the policies as well. So this is like first class citizens for us. Uh, <clears throat> you, you, you have tracing support on the policy server that is like the main entry point, but then every policy inside of the policy server is able to trace as they want. So you can also see if something is taking more time than it should, um, what are a re request, since this comes from with a UID from the API server, the UID goes through the goes, goes through the policy server and then goes through <clears throat> goes back, goes uh, down to the to the policy itself. And then if the policy trace uh, traces it somehow, it will um, it will get back to the policy server and the policy server will log all these trace events. And so you can use open telemetry uh, with a given collector, send that somewhere else, and you can also use Jaeger for inspecting these this, um, this tracing events. Also on our roadmap, there is something interesting uh, because we want to provide Prometheus metrics. And so by, by providing Prometheus, met Prometheus metrics, we are able to show uh, whether a policy is uh, lowing a lot or if it's rejecting a lot. We can see these numbers. We can see how many policies are running inside the cluster. We can, in general, we can expose a lot of interesting metrics that are very, very um, useful for, um, for a Kubernetes operator. And then regarding the supply chain attacks, uh, we have we, on the roadmap, we, we have plans for supporting or for seeing how we can interact with the SIG store uh, project uh, regarding policy signing. Because again, since we are security focused, a project very security focused, then we would like to sign policies because in the end, uh, policies are just binaries, right? Inside the inside of an OCI registry, is, of course, you can have sums of them, uh, but the idea is that we also support sign, signing policies. And now uh, let's go for a short demo because I have two small demos to show. All right, so now we are going to run policies on, on Kubernetes. And the problem that we are going to solve in this case is going to be uh, in our organization, we have this cluster that is exposed to production. So we are and we, we have end users approaching this cluster and we have ingresses resources over there. And so the thing is that we are using Cert Manager and we are using also Let's Encrypt. And we have two different ways of, uh, of requesting certificates. One is with Let's Encrypt a staging cluster issuer and the other is with Let's Encrypt production cluster issuer. So what we want to do in this case is to by enforcing the annotations because on the ingress annotation for send manager you can say what cluster is where you want an annotation on the ingress and so what we want to do is to limit this uh, what this safe annotation what this annotation can have with the safe annotations policy and so uh, if we look at the cluster admission policy, in this case, this is the kind resource that we can deploy on the cluster. And so the keyboard then will reconcile this. We say where, where our module is. In this case, this is coming from an OCI registry. What are the settings that it supports? In this case, constrained annotations, which means that this key on the resource that is going to evaluate has to be of this value. And then uh, we are going to target a number of rules. In this case, it's just one, uh, and it's targeting ingresses of the API group networking, Kubernetes IO, uh, on v1 version. 
And the operation that we are going to, to, to look after is create. And this is not a mutating <clears throat> policy. This is just validating one. OK, so let's deploy this uh, this policy on the cluster where I already deployed Cube Warden. And now we are going to wait for it to be ready uh, because now the, the controller is going to, to do some, um, some paperwork for us regarding Kubernetes. And then at the end, it's going to register the webhook. And when the webhook is, re is registered, then it's actually active. And now it finished. And now let's look at an ingress that has a Let's Encrypt uh, production cluster issuer. So this annotation is what we are expecting. This is uh, an ingress that we would like to, to, let, uh, to let pass, or to let pass through, because this is right, this is fine. This will get uh, a valid uh, certificate. And so we are going to try to create this one. And this uh, was properly created. Now let's look at another one. In this case, as you can see, this, this has the Let's Encrypt staging cluster issuer, and this would result in an invalid certificate for many of our users because uh, this CA is not trusted by, by browsers unless you manually trust it. And so we're going to try to create this one, and as expected, we get this error uh, coming from the policy uh, because the, this cluster issuer uh, value is not uh, matching what we expect. And so this is uh, how we can run uh, policies inside of a cluster. But now let's say that you have already invested time in having gatekeeper policies or open policy agent policies. You can actually reuse them with Cube Warden. You uh, don't really need to change anything. You just need to build them. So what I'm going to do, what I did, is to build, uh, to create an echo policy, which is super simple. It will just do uh, one thing. What it does is uh, it accepts some settings, and the settings basically say whether it should reject the request uh, or not. And if it rejects the request, what is the message it will provide back uh, well, because of the rejection? And it will not even evaluate the request itself. It will just do whatever the settings say. That, that, that's why it's called the echo one. And so I'm going to build it. And for that, I need the OPA build. Uh, command that comes with the OPA CLI. I target the WASM and I provide the entry point for, for my policy. And so I build and extract the policy.wasm file. And now what I'm going to do is uh, to run that locally. I don't want to, to annotate and publish that into an OC registry first. I just want to, to run that. And I want to see if, if it runs as I expect. And so I run that with KWCTL. And you can see on the settings JSON that I say reject false, which means that it's going to be accepted. And this is as expected a load. And now if I do the very same thing, but with the different settings, uh, in this case, reject true and with a rejected message, then I'm going to get a load false with the message that I am expecting from, from the settings and also this part coming from the, from the policy itself. And now let's do the very same thing. Uh, let's run this, this again, but in verbosity mode. So uh, we see some things coming from the policy evaluator, but the important bit here is this bit here that is coming directly from the policy. The policy is calling to the tracing call from, from Rigo, and Rigo is calling to the policy evaluator, and the policy evaluator is reporting this through tracing. So this is working out of the box. And now let me go back. OK, so some shout outs. Uh, what some time we are using this project to, to, to do the runtime of, of uh, policies. Uh, we are also using WAPC for doing the communication between the, host, the guest and the host. And we are also using the OCI distribution crate uh, that we use to pull and push to an OCI registry so we can push and pull OCI artifacts to, to, the, OCI, to the OCI registry. And this is part of the KRusted project. Uh, all of them are super useful and really nice communities over there. So yeah, really big shout outs to them. And uh, also a big shout out to you. So uh, join the community. Uh, we have the Cube Warden channel on the official Kubernetes Slack. You can join and look uh, for some policies on the Cube Warden Hub. We we need to, to, to write more policies, so we welcome all the policies that you want to contribute. You can also report any issues inside of our org. Uh, we have a number of, of um, repos over there, and also some documentation that we have. Uh, you, can, you can learn more about the project over there, and you can also contribute to the documentation if anything is missing or is not clear and enough, enough in, enoughly clear. And uh, with that, I will be open for questions. So thank you for your time. And I really hope you enjoy uh, this event. So thank you.